on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is the show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. Today I have joining me Hitomi from Minnesota. Uh, she works in publishing and she's joining us to talk about a few things that she's passionate about, including video games and board games, fashion, food, and languages. So we'll just jump right into it. So if you want to say hi, Hitomi, and tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe just choose one of these passions to get us started and we'll just go from there. Hey guys, uh, my name is Hitomi, um, and I live in the Midwest, kind of boring, but <laughs> um, I went to school for fashion design, and that's my ultimate passion is to design clothes. Um, I kind of go between wanting to work for a company or designing on my own and having my own um, label. Um, currently, I also uh, work in publishing, and... I kind of do that as like my full-time job. I obviously like just you know you got to work to pay the bills. But I personally um, chose an interest in working in publishing because it's still kind of a creative field. You know you have artists of some sort, you know, putting out their work, like creating it themselves, writing it, whatever. And then you know obviously the publishing world of publishing their work. Um, so it's really cool to be able to work with creative people still, even if it's not the same type of um, kind of art that I do. But um, it's, it's also a really big thing to learn about, the, like, an industry, whether, whether it's, you know, a fashion industry or some other industry where it comes, when it comes down to, um, you know, producing your work and, you know, putting it out there. So it's, it's still a really good um, learning experience for me, so I do enjoy doing that. Um, I'm sorry, what was the other thing? <laughs> no worries, you're on a roll. It's okay. Uh, yeah. you, you mentioned like you want to start a, uh, like a, like your own fashion brand and design and stuff too, and you can see like all the nice fancy threads and stuff in the backgrounds. Maybe we're yeah. getting a sneak peek at some future big hits for projects. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I just said um, like uh, just out of the passions list that we mentioned at the start about video games and board games, fashion, food, and languages, maybe we'll just choose one of those to focus on first and then just elaborate on that. So if you want to pick one and then I'll just ask you about that. Yeah. I mean, since we're talking about fashion, you can do that first. Yeah, um, sure. So I, I said I went to school for fashion design. Um, I don't remember when I graduated. <laughs> been a bit, but um, I really love doing fashion shows and that's like one of my favorite things about it is being able to do like a live show and be able to show the work that I've been doing and like all the creative things that come to my mind. Um, and I actually took a break from designing for maybe like a total of three or four years and I'm kind of just getting back into it. So I'm really excited to um, continue doing that again and that's partially why I have like things kind of set up um, so I can start doing that again and hopefully be able to do a show again soon. Nice. <laughs> if not, um, just like kind of in the immediate future, obviously do photo shoots and stuff. And I actually want to make uh, YouTube videos on some of my designs, like either showing it off or maybe talking about the process. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm thinking of going with my designs again. Um, I didn't like before, like I said, I've done shows, but I've never done really like any advertising on social media and stuff like that. I mean, it didn't, it existed when I was designing, but it, it, it hasn't been as big as social media is now. So yeah. being able to like make a YouTube video about it would be awesome. So it's kind yeah. of what I'm really excited to do. That, I think that would be such a cool thing to be able to kind of see the creative process behind some of the outfits and then get information on an upcoming fashion show and then see this thing on the runway or wherever it's going to be that someone got to see like kind of from start to finish so that'd be pretty cool so when you were doing fashion shows before what were those like was it just kind of like for runways or what kind of events were you doing there um so it was kind of different things um unfortunately the fashion scene here isn't very big like you know like new york or something we have a very small like creative fashion community so there's not actually a lot of shows that are available here um 
one of my good friends, um, Samantha Ray, she was actually on the last Project Runway. Oh, wow. Um, she does... She produces a show every year here that's more kind of like um, anime inspired, like Japanese culture inspired. Yeah. Um, and I've done stuff for that show. Um, the the only thing I find difficult about doing shows is that I like really more intricate and avant garde and couture kind of style rather than um, like fast fashion stuff that you might find at Forever Twenty One or Target. You know, it's like. That kind of like normal stuff isn't really my thing, and I feel like the um, kind of the scene here is more more wearable stuff, more things that you can wear on the daily basis, and that's not what I really like to do. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for me to find shows locally that I can show my stuff at and feel like I'm getting something out of it besides you know sharing my work with everyone. Mm-hmm. So I might. I mean, in the future, I might see if I can do shows elsewhere, you know, um, like some of the bigger cities like Chicago or New York, well, New York's hard and, <laughs> and expensive, but, you know, like kind of a bigger city than where I am right now, so. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Have you got to, like, travel to any of the bigger cities and watch some fashion shows or events like that and kind of get some ideas or just get inspired? I have not. Um, and see, one of the things is, like, with when it comes to the fashion kind of community, not just here, but in large, um, like I was saying, that social media, media, when I was, like, actively designing, wasn't huge. Like, you don't see people posting YouTube videos on, like, oh, I'm making this fashion line, and, you know, here's here it is. I mean, a lot of it was photographs. Like, you'd just see it in a magazine, you'd see it online. Like, that's the way that you share your designs, but like the only the only kind of like three D media of it would be at fashion shows in New York or London and all that stuff. So that's kind of why I'm excited to do this again and be able to show it on YouTube because like now any of us can make a video yeah. and show it show like um, an outfit in three D and be able to see the movement or see like really intricate things that you can't see just on a photo. Um, so yeah, I guess I haven't personally seen a show, um, but I, you know, obviously I watch videos and stuff like that. I watch, I watch runway stuff, and um, I would love to go to one and see it live. I mean, a lot of the um, couture fashion that I enjoy are obviously stuff that you see on the London runways and New York, the New York runways. So it'd be really cool to see. Cool. Are, are you following like any uh, specific? fashion related shows or series or channels or things like that that people should check out if they're also interested in it? I have not. If anyone knows of any, I'd be, you know, happy to know about them, but I know that there are like even back then there were people who did um like kind of craft videos in a way, you know, they show like how to make a pillowcase or something, but yeah. I didn't really run into people that actually did fashion, like straight up fashion design. Mm. You know, there's people also these days that do like cosplay videos and stuff, but yeah, um, more like original original designs and like actual fashion design. Like that's something that I don't really know of. I haven't actually gone out to look for them, but you know, you bring that up and it's something I should probably look into. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's just a, a side effect of this show is to kind of it inspired not only people watching but even guests to kind of I don't know put more time into their passion and enjoy it to the fullest kind yeah. of thing but yeah no that's really cool you mentioned cosplay as well have you ever been to kind of any expos and things and seen some cosplayers or done it yourself or designed any of that stuff or that's more outside of your focus <laughs> it's definitely outside of my focus uh, it's more because I want to be able to spend my time making something that's original rather mm. than... Like copying the that, design, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, and, you know, back then, I, I, there is a lot of cosplay, even where I live, like a lot of people that do kind of sew clothing, they, they're usually someone who cosplays. And um, I've never really been interested in it, and... Uh, I actually, for a while, I kind of looked down upon it because I was, it was, it was really annoying that people would associate me 
like making clothes or being able to sew with cosplay they'd be like oh do you cosplay or do you make cosplay and it's just like no i don't i'm actually a designer like i i actually make my own things and design my own things i don't just take a picture and you know make it yeah, and yeah. um but um as as that community has grown like i actually find um people that i find really respectful that um have really good skill to make the cosplay look really, really good or really realistic or close to what the actual, you know, character design was. Yeah. Um, so I do have respect for that and for people who do a really amazing job doing those. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just personally not something that I do. Yeah, so. no, I totally understand. <laughs> sorry, sorry if I uh, brought oh. up any bad memories. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's yeah. also, well, it's, all, it's also, so it's like a combination of things. It's the fact that I tell people I can sew and kind of that I'm Asian, and they're just like, oh, do you cosplay? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I haven't really been to much of the Midwest, but I just assume from kind of the Midwestern, I don't know, stereotype, for lack of a better word, that they're more prone to all the different kind of stereotypes there, so it's easy to just kind of box somebody in like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, I, I mean, I have gone to cons, um... Yeah, I actually used to go to the one of the biggest towns at Anime Expo in California. Hmm. So I actually used to go there kind of every year for like a few years. But it was more because um, I just had a lot of friends that would go. Oh. So I, it, it was like my only chance to go see my friends because we all live in different places. Like, yeah. I, I would even have friends from Canada that went there and then we met up. So <laughs> oh, cool. that's, that's kind of the only reason I would go. But yeah. How did you, if you don't mind me asking, how did you like kind of meet all these people from all over the place and like coordinate something to all gather there? Would you, are you part of like different communities and stuff or like online? Um, <laughs> so this kind of dates me, but I, the first person I met in Canada was through, I think I met them through the internet, but yeah, actually, okay, sorry. I did meet that person through the internet. It was just like, you know, some like chat room thing. And oh, okay, we just became okay. really good friends, and I met a bunch of other people through that person in Canada. Oh. And so, like, I don't know, we'd all, like, meet up in California <laughs> whenever Anime Expo would come along. That's pretty cool. I don't think, our chat room's really that dated. I, I feel like, well, honestly, I can't remember the last time I used one. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> well, I, what I was originally going to say when I said it, it was going to date myself is I, I was thinking I had met that specific person through, like, Pen paling? <laughs> oh, uh, well, some people still pen pal nowadays. It's like nostalgic <laughs> and, and more personal. I guess um, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I I tried pen paling like I don't know a few years ago, and it was it was fun. It felt fun, even though like my friends lived like pretty close, but it was just like a fun <laughs> so thing to try. Like, they were kind of like locally. It well like same like within a less than a three hour drive. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but it was it was just it was fun. Yeah. So uh, that was a pretty nice like overview and insight into kind of your passion about the whole fashion industry and design and stuff. Did you have anything else that you want to mention about it, or do you want to move on to another item on our uh, list? Uh, not really. I'm really excited for the Alexander McQueen movie that's coming out. He's one of my like fashion designer icon, someone I like hmm. look up to and have been inspired by. And there's a movie that's going to, or kind of like a documentary, I think, um, that will come out about him. And um, I think like, it's really nice that there's these, all these like documentaries coming out about designers. Like there's a bunch on like Netflix about people like Dior and Oh, Chanel yeah. and everything like that and it's really cool to be able to see that and kind of get inspired by that stuff and also just like learn their process yeah and so um having this new one coming out soon I am super excited about it and the fact that he's one of my favorite designers is really exciting <laughs> yeah what, what is it what are some things that you like specifically about his designs I'm sorry I couldn't hear what you said what did you say oh sorry uh I I was just asking, what are some things that you like about his designs? Oh, um, he's kind of got a more darker um, aesthetic 
so more like kind of punk gothic. I, that's kind of my, I grew up as a goth girl in a way. Um, so just having an alternative style um, background and inspiration, um, I think that's why I'm, I'm attracted to his stuff. They're more, yeah, they're just more darker. It's not, you know, you've got like Dior's sophistication in like you know these beautiful dresses and gowns and stuff and he alexander mcqueen you know designed these uh, i don't know if you know if if you're familiar with his work but it's stuff like you would see lady gaga wear and that's oh. it's very creative you know it's something out of the box and i like that i like things that are different or just aesthetically weird <laughs> did he do lady gaga's meat dress um, I, I don't know if he did that, but he did, um, what is that video? Um, I think like if it's in one of her music videos, it's probably pretty good looking. Cause I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in one of her music videos. I can't remember the song though. Yeah. But it's just but, like one specific one or did he do a few or just one sticks I'm out sure for you? I'm sure he's done several. I know that they, I know that she wore a lot of his stuff, so. Hmm. That's cool. But that kind of gives like a good idea of you just say Lady Gaga's fashion and then yes, the picture comes to mind. So, <laughs> yeah. Definitely out there, but still like it still looks good in its own way. It's like very unique and yes. kind of stands out. Yes, that's exactly like what I like. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Is that like kind of the feel you're hoping to maybe eventually achieve with your own designs? Um, I think so. Uh, like I said, it's really hard for me here to be able to show my stuff and generate that interest in buyers or like, you yeah. know, it's obviously things that you might not wear every day. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to go to like the Met Gala to wear, but you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's an audience for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there definitely is. That's cool. Awesome. So that was, uh, I guess, kind of a nice, uh, interesting tip on what's coming up for fashion documentaries what's it called and like when is it coming out i honestly i think it's just called either mcqueen or alexander alexander mcqueen and i don't know when it's coming out to be honest okay i just keep seeing like like ads promo for it or something like and i'm just excited <laughs> awesome cool well any mcqueen fans out there you have something to look forward to sometime soon hopefully <laughs> cool so um, maybe we can move on to another one of your passions. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got video games and board games or food or languages. What do you feel uh, like? We can talk about games because, I mean, that's kind of where my YouTube channel is going in the direction of. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. So what are some so, of the games that you're interested in and kind of like what have you done on YouTube so far and what got you into video games in the first place? Sure. So, um, I've been play playing video games since basically I was growing up. Um, I have older brothers, so I kind of grew up more of a tomboy or just, you know, like playing stuff that guys played with. Yeah. And, um, so I had like a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo growing up and I just like, I loved playing them and I just kind of continued playing them as I was growing up and now I... I'm kind of a, I'm a game collector, but I also, I, I also actually play games. I don't just collect them. Um, Are there people so that I just do, collect them? <laughs> that, that would well, seem there like... are people that just collect and don't really play them, so... Oh, that's sad. <laughs> it is, but, um, so yeah, I, I collect from, like, you know, retro games to the current gen games. I don't play PC games only because I don't have a desktop computer. I just have a laptop and I not only do I have a laptop, but I have a Mac <laughs> and so there's not a lot of games that are Mac compatible. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> have you so kind of noticed like uh, in the game community, it seems like people either go like console or like PC. It's, I, I don't know, I haven't looked into it too much, but I feel like it's hard to get into both at the same time because like it's so expensive to go either way. It is. Um, I, well, I feel like as long as you have a gaming computer, you know, 
you just have to buy the games. It's, but it's like the initial initial setup of you know getting a decent gaming um, PC, which yeah. is like you know a couple grand. Yeah. <laughs> so, so so you went the more um, console routes, right? What? So so you kind of went like for more of like console gaming. I mean, I didn't specifically choose console gaming. <laughs> I just like I said, I got a laptop and I got a Mac, and I just it kind of prevents me from really gaming on the computer. I mean, I would love to. I would honestly love to be able to do PC gaming, but I need to um, spend my money on sewing and designing. <laughs> so I don't know when the time I'm going to get a gaming PC. So right now, yeah, I just do console. Um, so yeah, I have pretty much every console that exists. Well, not that exists, but, you know, from Atari to the PS4 and Xbox oh, wow. One. Um, I find myself not really playing a lot of, you know, current-gen games on the Xbox or the PlayStation, um, mostly because the games are just so expensive. Yeah. They're like $60 a game. And yeah, it's crazy. To, like, you know, buy two games, you know, that's just $100 right there. Yeah. That's one. But, yeah, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy retro games just because... It's kind of a nostalgia thing of being a kid in a way, and there's like simplicity to it, but it's also like really difficult. It, you know, old games are you think they're easy, or you remember it being easy when you're a kid, but as you play them as an adult, they're just like fucking hard. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah. Anyways, about video games uh, with my channel right now, I just do. Um, uh, Sorry, I do pickup videos, so, you know, if I find or buy, like, old games, I make videos about it, and um, I always wanted to do, not necessarily streaming, but I wanted to do videos of me, of gameplay, Yeah. and I um, just recently kind of got the equipment to be able to record video of me, of, of the gameplay, Oh. so um, I'm looking forward to being able to, to do gameplay videos on my channel. And um, one of the reasons I want to do that is I want to be able to share like more obscure or smaller games that people don't really play, yeah. kind of. Or that, you know, everyone does videos or, do, or does streaming of all these like new games, like Fortnite and, you know, whatever is big at the moment, or all these um, kind of first-person shooter games that's online and I want to be I want to make videos of games that are like kind of older and that were fun or are fun or that people don't know a lot about of mm -hmm. um, and I have several like Japanese games like lesser known Japanese games that I do want to share with people and oh, cool. I don't know I kind of I kind of want to be able to share games that people either don't know about or forgot about and kind of you know, remind people they exist and <laughs> to play them. <laughs> cool. Are, are there any of those specific games that you have in your mind right now or ones that you've picked up recently or made videos about already that you want to share about, like those kind of niche games? Um, I haven't made any videos yet, but um, there's this Game Boy game called Nubo, and it's kind of a puzzle platformer, so think like, you know, like a side-scroller Mario game with um, like little puzzles that you have to do hmm. on the board to be able to advance to the next level. Okay. Um, it's not like it's not like trying to get to the end of the the map or the level. It's kind of doing little puzzles within the map to be able to go on to the next level. Oh. Uh, but it's really cool. It's like I I actually didn't know about it until I picked up the game and it was like I don't know a less than five dollar game and. Oh wow. Um, when I tried to look it up, I think I found like maybe two videos on YouTube about it, but it was just like, and like the first level, first couple level gameplay, and like there was no explanation about it. It was just like a video of the gameplay. Oh. So it'd be cool to be able to like actually talk about it and. Yeah, you'd be like the first tell one. Tell people about it. Yeah, that's cool. So when are you gonna play that one? Um, hopefully soon. I t like I literally just got my equipment like a couple days ago, and I've been setting it up since then. And I've been testing like how to record and 
all that stuff. So as soon as I get that kind of recording process done, I want to like do a video. Awesome. So. That's cool. And then you playing board games as well, or just mostly video games? Oh yeah, I love board games. Um, my only issue is I just like don't really have anyone to play play them with. Oh. <laughs> uh, I just like I'm just a busy person, and everyone else I know is busy. It's hard to like you know get people over and play, but I would love to do videos of board games and like kind of show the gameplay and review them. Um, I did do one board game review and it was on a Mary Kay and Ashley board game that I just happened to find and I was like I gotta like do a video of this I bet no one has ever like done a video or seen this and I haven't I, I think I like did a quick google search and I didn't find anyone that ever like reviewed it or anything so I was like this is awesome <laughs> so being able to just like um, make videos on board games that aren't as big that's also like I like to share like weird or like smaller, lesser known things. Yeah, that's really cool. I've never. What was the name of it? I haven't even heard of that one before. Um, it. I think it was based off of their like last movie that they ever did, which was New York Minute. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, okay. One of those like. Movie to board game adaptation yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't actually that bad of a game, but you know, it was just like, okay, this is weird. Yeah. I can definitely, that's that's weird, but also kind of, like, intriguing. Like, I'd be really interested to see, like, what it is and, like, <laughs> yeah. if it's actually fun and stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I actually, um, I picked up a bunch of, like, old board games from kind of the 70s or 80s. Oh, wow. And there are these just, like, crazy old, like, kind of vintage-looking board games, and I really want to do videos on them as well. Um, so <laughs> eventually when I have time to do that and sit down and play those oh man I think that'd be really interesting I, I feel like like opening a board game from the 70s or 80s and like trying to play it is like the start of like a horror movie or something <laughs> there's um there's like this old like 70s or 80s board game of close encounters oh no do you know that no okay so <laughs> i haven't played it yet but it's like i and this and the board is just like this board of like I think it's like a grid and it has just numbers on it or something but on like on the back it goes the, like the kind of description on the back of the box started out as imagine this and I was like okay any board game that has to tell me to imagine something <laughs> this has got to be good <laughs> yeah that's definitely dated <laughs> it's like you yeah, may have never heard exactly. of this concept but there's this imagination that you have <laughs> right <laughs> Oh, that, that'd, that'd, be cool. that'd be pretty interesting. I thought you were going to go down a different road and say, like, it started with do not play in a dark room or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, like, when you said horror movie, that's what I thought of. Just, like, imagine this. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's some, like, Twilight Zone stuff or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't heard of, like, of course, video game streaming and stuff is so huge right now, but... <laughs> I've, I've never even thought of to look up like board game play or reviews and stuff. So have, have you uh, like delved much into that, into those searches or anything and saw that if there's a lot of people doing that? Um, yeah, I actually, because I also didn't think that that was a huge thing, but when I, when I looked it up, there was actually quite a few, but a lot of them tend to be, um, I feel like, I don't know how to say it, but, like, those really, like, nerdy board games. Yeah. Um, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. I can't even tell you an example because I just don't. I'm not interested in those kind of board games. Those are, like, those are, like, board games I imagine people who play Magic or D&D &D would play are those, like. Yeah, th those ones usually take, like, hours to play yeah, around like, to, right? I have a coworker who plays those kind of board games, and he talked about playing them for ten hours. Oh my god! I was gosh. like, oh my god, I cannot sit there and play something for ten hours. No. Like, <laughs> that that like the fun probably stopped at like maybe two or three hours. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. So there is there are uh, actually several channels that do game reviews, and um, when the the reason I got that this kind of idea well one is just because I like playing board games but like way back in the day before YouTube was really big 
or a thing. Um, I don't know if you know him. There was a guy, the angry video game nerd. Sounds he familiar. would do Yeah, so he would do, like, game reviews, but eventually he started doing board game reviews. Oh. Um, and he did, at the time, because it was, like, early, kind of early to mid-2000s, so a lot of the games he reviewed were maybe, like, board games from the 90s mm. or early 2000s. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, so that always stuck with me through the years um, until now, and like you said, if there were any, um, when I did look some up, there were quite a few, but like, like I said, they focus more on like newer games or um, kind of kid games, because you know, like these days, like kids have their own YouTube channels now. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of people that do like reviews of more of the kid games that are coming out now. Um, oh, okay. But I don't see a lot on like really old or kind of more smaller obscure games, which is also kind of my niche where I like to find all the weird like ones that no one knows about. Yeah, I don't know why, but when you said like kids with their own YouTube channel, I immediately thought of like this one video I saw a few years ago. And this kid looks like he's in elementary or junior high and he's just like a review video of him eating like fruit gushers. <laughs> I don't know why. And I think it had like quite a lot of views and it was not even a real review. He's like, yeah, it's good. And then, like, that was his video. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but I know like, there's okay, some, so, like, yeah, kid so YouTubers kid with YouTube tons of videos. videos that I think about when I, like, hear that are, like, when, when like, parents film their kid because their kid wants to do a, a video of them reviewing, like, a toy that they got or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I think yeah, that, that'd so be more interesting to watch than, like, yeah. a kid eating gushers. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, that would be really cool if you can kind of get the first video of, like, specific games out there, too. So, yeah. yeah. Even though, even if it's not a popular game, I'm sure people have still searched for it, trying to find, like, what it is or even just discover new ones and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, I mean, that's kind of why I started doing a, a YouTube channel was because I wanted to, like, I have a lot of passion in, like, some of my interests, like mm -hmm. the ones we've been talking about. And um, some of it is like, I, I seem to know like about weird things or like more lesser known things within the genre. And I want to be able to share that with people. Like, I think that it's, I think it's really interesting personally. And yeah. so I don't know, I feel like maybe someone else would. Yeah, of course. Even I think I just have this feeling that no matter how weird your interest or passion or something is, there's always like, somebody else out there at least who like likes the same thing so if they right. find it yeah then you're gonna be like their favorite thing to watch kind of thing right <laughs> i think my biggest challenge though when it comes to making videos is the, like how do i present this without it being boring but also being informational like yeah. i think that's i think that's where i get stuck because i like i said i made one board game video and actually i made two but i didn't I didn't um, edit or put up the other one because I just felt like I'm like okay I got it like I feel like like I want to show the gameplay but I don't want it to be boring where they're just like okay yeah yeah I've been watching her play this for like 30 minutes like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so I'm trying to find like a really good way to show like the gameplay but also have it be interesting yeah yeah I think that's such a challenge because. I think it, it's so easy to just like pick up your phone and record something or your camera or whatever you have and just you can upload it with one button but the real difference comes in like your editing skills and all that and it's so hard to make it fun and watchable especially if it's like a longer video right yeah so I don't know I don't know what the secret sauce is for that but there's like a lot of I think a lot of practice has to go into your editing and and things like that to make those watchable but yeah at least you have the content to start, and then I <laughs> right. can come after. <laughs> I have a lot of content ideas. It's just being able to like present it in a way that's not that like you know people want to watch it for ten minutes or something. Yeah. Oh, I'm having that challenge because my interviews are all like forty to fifty minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, I watch them all because I think they're interesting, and I think I get to talk like to some interesting people and stuff. But for like yeah. typical viewer, it's 
hard to get someone to pay attention for more than like three minutes, let alone right. 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so. think like, isn't there, isn't there a thing where it's like most people will watch for like, you know, 10 to 30 seconds. And if it doesn't interest them in the first, you know, X amount of time, they don't watch it. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Maybe I should have, I don't know, like explosions at the start of my videos or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it would take. Sure, like, but you know, one of the my, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to like YouTube or like videos or st and stuff like that is like clickbait. Like I really yeah. I don't want to put something out just for people to click on it. Be like, you know, a picture of me stabbing someone. You know, someone might you know that would get clicks and yeah. in the video I'm like just talking. You know, like I don't want to just make people click on my videos because I have something that's unrelated to the video. Yeah, I, I, th I think I read something about YouTube um, adding something to kind of counter that and that if there's like a lot of people who click something and then just like leave within the first few seconds because it wasn't true to the thumbnail, they're just going to like uh, bury yeah. that video. Yeah. Yeah, so I think like no no one likes clickbait, not even the people like making YouTube, so <laughs> they're also trying to hide it. So that's good. It's just so hard to get around it, though. Whenever I, like, you know, go on YouTube and try and find, like, new things to watch or, like, even a new, you know, creator to watch, it's so hard to find, like, weed out all that clickbait, so. Yeah, I don't know. But I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of stabbing somebody, um, let's talk about <laughs> food. That was a really bad segue, but... <laughs> Okay, wait, sorry, what did you say? I was laughing. So, so you have, like, uh, also food and languages on your list of passions. I, and then, I don't know why, but when you talked about a thumbnail of stabbing someone, I would just, like, thought of, oh, that's going to be clickbait for, like, someone, like, eating steak or something because they're, like, holding a knife. <laughs> and then, yeah, so I just thought of, like, you have food on your passions list. Maybe we could nicely but strangely transition into that one. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, I love, I, I love food. I love eating it. I love um, cooking, well, actually, okay, I don't love cooking, but, like, I've found, like, a passion in cooking and, like, trying new recipes and stuff like that, so, um, also, I'm very, I'm very into subscription boxes, and that's the other half of my channel right now, <laughs> is oh, yeah, subscription yeah. boxes, and, um, so, doing those, like, meal delivery services, yeah, like, a uh, Blue Apron and stuff like that, like, those are so amazing. Like, I, okay, so I know part of it is I should review, like, the actual taste of the food or the recipe. Yeah. But half of me just, like, is just super excited to get this box and this stuff of food. And, like, I don't know. I just get really excited about it. But, um, <laughs> so I do, I do enjoy, like, cooking. Um, I love going out to eat and trying new places. Like, that's, like, a huge thing. I love trying new places. Whenever there's a new restaurant opening up, um, I'm like always wanting. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> awesome. Do you so, have like specific yeah, types I mean, I or? I have a passion for food in general. Like, oh, okay. Nice. So, which have you tried like a few different of these like um, meal prep box providers and things like that, or just like a specific one? How do they okay, compare? Okay, so I've <laughs> I've tried two. Okay. Uh, I've tried Home Chef and. Whoa. And Green Chef. Um, the only reason I've only tried a couple of them is because I actually can't eat dairy. Oh. So being able to find like um, being able to find those kind of services that have dietary restriction like things in mind is very hard. And um, I think I there are a few, and those two I think do it. They have like a dairy free option or like one that or one that has like less dairy or something um so that's like my biggest thing about those is they do they have started doing like you know vegan ones they've done gluten-free ones and but dairy-free no <laughs> like that's not a huge like these things so um yeah i find it a little difficult to be able to find one that has a dairy free option or has like like I I actually don't mind vegan food and that's sometimes I just do vegan just because I know there's no dairy. Yeah, well, that's uh, true. But 
I do. I I actually I do like meat and I eat it. So um, being able to find one that is dairy free is a little difficult. So I've tried two, and so far I really like them. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I just realized that we're we're almost like to the point in the show where I switch to music and wrap it up already. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if we'll have even time to talk about languages much, but. If you want to maybe lightning round what you're passionate about about languages, and then we can go into the music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's honestly there's not too much to talk about that. To be honest, I I love languages, but I'm like I am not really good at learning them. Mm. But I there are like so many languages I'd I'd love to learn. Like my biggest passion of like which language I want to learn next or want to learn in general is actually sign language. Oh, cool. Um, I think it's really interesting. I think it's really useful. Um, I would love to be able to, you know, help random people that are deaf or are hard of hearing and just happen to be right next to them and can help them. Yeah. Um, but no, like I, I really want to learn that. Um, the only thing that the downside of ASL is that it's it's different in every, in every country. You know, like yeah. if I learn it, I won't be able to use it and. Like, I, I mean, I usually travel to Asia, so, like, I couldn't go to Asia and use it. You know, it's it's different everywhere. Um, that's the only psychic thing about that. But, yeah, I I mean, growing up, I've learned Chinese, Japanese, French. I'm not, like, 100% fluent in any of those, but <laughs> I can get by. Um, so, yeah, I just, I love languages. I love, you know, the sound of it, the ability to be able to read things from a different country and understand things so. yeah it totally like opens a new part of your mind and it just like feels different and then just really cool to be able to see something like familiar but not but still like foreign to you when you go other places right like, you can read and interact and yeah it's it's really cool i'm a big pa yeah. i'm a big passionate about um language learning and stuff too so Okay. I wish we could have had more time for that, but we're like almost at the end, so I have to. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no worries. No, no. It was it was a good talk so far. So yeah, it's time just flies by when you're not paying attention to it. So yeah, let's. Those were the uh, passions and projects so far. So let's jump into the playlist and the songs that you provided me before the episode include Jesse J's masterpiece, X Japan's Jade. Lindsay Sterling's Crystallize and Katy Perry's Unconditionally. So maybe if you want to choose one of those to start us off with and then tell us what you like about the songs or the artists or what you like about the music you chose in general. Sure. Um, so I guess we can start with Jesse J's Masterpiece. Um, so I found that really that song like really inspiring. And um, I, I have battled with mental health myself like depression and all that stuff um so having a song that kind of encourages the fact that like we're not perfect we all have our issues and problems and stuff like that and that we're always working on ourselves and like that kind of message that she gives through not just that song but other songs of hers I just find very inspiring and it you know it hits close to home for me so that's Pretty much why I love that song. Um, fun fact: I'm actually going to see her live at the end of this year. So. Oh, awesome! Excited. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, do I talk about all of them or just? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, the other one, Extra Pan Jade. Um. Kind of the same. Kind of the same idea. I mean, it's. X Japan has been a band that I've loved for a while. They're from Japan, obviously. I don't know if anyone knows, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, the band itself, like they've gone through a lot of hardship as a band. Like they've lost, um, they've lost uh, band members from not. I I wouldn't say suicide, but you know, people who had also mental issues, and um, it's kind of I feel like an ode to being like that kind of depression and problems and stuff like that. So um, it's just, I don't know, I find it really beautiful. And they, I think 
it's one of, if not their only song, completely in English. Mm. Um, so it was, I don't know, it's just, uh, the minute I heard it, I just fell in love with it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, and it came from like a documentary, oh shit. Uh, we briefly lost connection due to some technic te 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 technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's why it's a different background and stuff now, but we'll pick up where we left off and wrap it up because we're almost at the end. So you just talked about X Japan's Jade, and you're about to mention Lindsay Sterling's Crystallize and Katy Perry's Unconditionally. Yeah, so uh, with Lindsay Sterling's Crystallize, um, obviously there's no lyrics in it. Uh, but I happened to see her live and that specific song live just somehow touched me. Like there was so much emotion in it and I could feel it. Um, so it's more of a personal thing, obviously, because there's no lyrics. It's our kind of, you know, our interpreta interpretation of it. Yeah. And to me, it just, for me, it was just a very moving song. Like I felt the emotion of everything that is personal to me like like i said with all the other previous songs um as well there's just like i don't know i felt there was a sort of sadness to it but also like a hope to it in a way and that's how i perceive that so um that's kind of why i like that song it just t touched me in a certain way um awesome. and i'm sure everyone also interprets that and her music differently because it's in more instrumental um and then so with Katy Perry's Unconditionally, um, it kind of goes in the same <laughs> um, way as we're, we're not perfect and um, we always have to learn how to care and love someone for who they are and like, you know, no matter what is, whether it's in their past or how they currently are as a person, like their faults, like we are able to love people unconditionally no matter what and um, I just... I just thought that was really um, touching and it has a good message of um, always sticking by someone even if even if there are things that you know <laughs> you don't agree with or that they you know bothers you about them it's something to always keep in mind that we are able to love someone no matter what you know yeah and I think also like in these times at least here in America, <laughs> we have to kind of keep that in mind with everything that's going on, you know? Yeah, so. for sure. And I hope all the viewers of the show can still love the show unconditionally, despite the imperfections. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's actually um, kind of an interesting thing to mention about the things going on in America and being able to just, like, like get along and care for someone about who they are. And that's kind of one of the things I wanted to do with my shows just show like all kinds of different people's perspectives coming from various backgrounds and uh, every, all these kind of experiences and just have these like nice casual but kind of a little bit more in-depth conversations just to show that there's all kinds of people out there who care about a lot of like really cool and exciting things and maybe they're even in common with what you have so just be nice to everybody <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so yeah, thanks for um, being a guest on the show. Thanks for coming on. And uh, if anyone watching the show wants to find you on social media or anything, how can they do that? Um, so you can find me on YouTube under Hitomi in Wonderland. Um, I've been named that just obviously because I want to create a world that is fun and everyone can enjoy. Um, my Instagram is xdamaged. Um, it's spelled a little different way, so I can give it to you to um, you know, put it on the screen or whatever. Plug I'll it down it. in the description. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think those are the only two really places you can follow me. I have other ones, but I don't really update those very often. <laughs> okay, no worries. So yeah, that brings us to the end of another episode of the Vita Mits Podcast. If you like what you saw on the show, you can subscribe to my channel at Beat on Bits or follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Beat on Bits as well. Uh, so that yeah, that's it. That's That's another episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you want to say bye, tell me. Sure. You Thank I... you for having me on the show. It was really, really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, also meeting someone new. It's awesome. So thank you so much for this. And we'll probably keep talking. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Thanks again. Bye, everybody.